Christ, this decade's almost over. What the hell happened here? But with that said, I have a top 10 decade list coming out from many different genres. We got comedies, animated, top 10 sequels, top 10, top 25 movies of the decade. But this video is going to be about the top 10 horror films of this decade. This is going to be a fun list to go through, guys. So make sure to comment down below. Let me know what your favorite horror films from this decade were. Do you guys agree with my list? Do you not? Again, this is fully my opinion. If you disagree... That's fine. That's what's great about film. It's so subjective. And of course, if you're new here, hit that like and subscribe button so you guys never miss out on any content like this and early movie reviews on a daily basis. Thank you guys again so much for watching this. Comment down below, but let's get started. my number 10 is a movie that absolutely shook me by how great it was and that was Don't Breathe. A movie that I got to see in an IMAX theater with my friends and we were just shook into the core with what Fetty Alvarez did with inside this movie. We were on the edge of our seats. I went and saw this movie twice within 24 hours and I was just so locked in throughout this whole entire movie the sound design is some of the best sound design in any horror film I've ever experienced and there's talks about a sequel I'm all for it you can't even discuss how great this film is without talking about the cast in here and how relatable they make you feel in here and actually the old man in here my god terrifying one of the best horror monsters and he's not a monster technically but he is a monster living throughout it it's like the reverse Home Alone, but the fucked up version of it, and I'm all for that. And coming in at my number nine is gonna be Paranormal Activity 3. I'm a kind of a sucker for these, say, what do you say, these found footage films. I don't love them all, to be honest. I definitely don't love them all. And Paranormal Activity is intriguing to me, but I absolutely love the third one and the tricks and tools of the scares that they do throughout this one. Just that one sequence when they put the camera on the fan and it's just going back and forth, back and forth. Some of the most intense aspects of this entire movie was in that moment. And a lot of people will be like, Paranormal Activity, it isn't scary, Zach. Okay, I want you to watch that, phone, that film, Home Alone, and then go home. Go. Just go home to your home. Be home alone 24 hours at night. If you're not scared, you're a liar. And I don't believe you. It's the same thing with like the uh, one of my honorable mentions that's going to be on here, which is the Blair Witch remake. Absolutely love the Blair Witch remake. But people go, Zach, it's not scary. I want you to watch that. Drive up to the woods and camp. Yeah, I said it. Camp. You know, my number eight is going to be a little bit of a cheat here. It's any Ari Aster film. Yeah, this is tough. Um, I, I didn't know which one to put on here, but I absolutely love what Ari Aster did with Hereditary and Midsummer, and I wanted to place them both inside at my number eight just because of that. And yeah, it's a little bit of cheat, but when you talk about top 10 films of the decade, especially for a certain genre, it gets a little tough. While here's the thing, I don't consider these films to be full horror films. I consider Hereditary to be very much a drama, and I consider Midsummer to be a psychological folk tale. There are a lot of horror moments to these films, though. Hereditary, I walked out, and while I do not like the ending of Hereditary, I walked out with my mouth on the floor. Like, Tony Collette's performance is out of this world, undeniably perfect. But I walked out, my jaw was on the floor, my eyes were opened up, and I said, What the fuck did I just watch? You know, some people will be like, That's the funniest movie I've ever seen. Well, you're weird. I, I don't know how you feel that way. But Midsummer kind of goes back to that way. It's psychologically messed up because of this relationship and the way that Ari Aster deals with family and relationships inside his horror film is so unique. And I know there's this like hot take going around of how he just remakes bad horror films. I don't care what you say. I love what he did with both these. The production design alone, the, the performances alone are worthwhile than talking about it. Coming in on my number seven is It Chapter One. Now, I guess I could have put an It Chapter Two in here as well. Kind of a whole of what they did within the whole series. And the fact that they actually got both films put together... It's, it's wonderful. It's one of the best horror stories ever told with inside a book. And the fact that Muschietti actually got both films made and then that they combine perfectly together makes for one of the best packages but the thing with it chapter one for me it just steals me i could rewatch that film so many times and while it is pretty long these characters this cast of group of kids is phenomenal with one another the way that they interact 
I love this coming of age story and the way that they shaped it throughout a horror film because that's what the book is about. And I love how Muschietti shaped it throughout it and made it intertwine inside the horror and fears of who Pennywise the Clown is. Coming to my number six, it's going to be It Follows, one of the best slasher films of the decade. I love this film. It's a movie that I love showing people. I mean, it's the concept alone is what hooked me in. Think about this. Think about this. And of course, this director also did um, the film Under the Silver Lake this year. Totally underrated. But think about this movie. You have sex with a stranger, and they tell you, hey, just so you know, this monster is going to start following you. You can only see it, and the only way to get rid of it is to have sex with someone else and pass it along. It's the STDs of, of Ghost. It, it's such an intriguing concept, but it's haunting at the same time. And there's one sequence within it that I don't want to give away if you haven't seen it, but it happens to deal with a bedroom and them opening the door. And just how it plays out is just so unique. And Mitchell's directing in here is one of my fa most fascinating things in here. And the way that he plays around within the world and the mythology of It Follows. But also how he plays around the mythology of any of his films that he's done. It's one of the most intriguing aspects of it. And that's why I appreciate and love It Follows so much. Before we get into my top five, guys, I got some honorable mentions here to discuss with you. We got Annihilation, Ready or Not, Us, The Pact, Evil Dead, Good Night Mommy, which you should definitely check out, Ten Cloverfield Lane, Apostle, A Quiet Place, Bone Tomahawk, and Upgrade. And then I'm, also I want to give a shout out to any film that Mike Flanagan has made this decade because that guy is just a master. And you got to also look at Annabelle Creation. David F. Sandberg really took a franchise that was crap and made it great. Of course, if you guys are new here again, this is your reminder. Hit that like and subscribe button. It does help with the algorithm, raising me up the ranks. And also comment down below. I want to discuss with you guys what are some of your favorite horror films from this decade. Of course, also hit over to Sam Sean Films on how to see films early. And a big thank you to you and a big thank you to my Patreon supporters because without you, I wouldn't be able to do this. Pulling up to my number five is The Witch. The fact that Robert Eggers directed this film and just brought it to life is one of the most fascinating folktales of the decade and in general of the horror genre. The score for this film is one one of the most haunting and memorable scores that I've ever heard in my life. Black Phillip is an icon waiting to happen inside the horror film genre. And what A24 did here and what they let Eggers do here is fascinating. The performances, everything around it is superb. And some people find it to be slow burn. It's my cup of tea. I love when horror can latch into here and take us into a period of time that we've never been a part of, but able to tell it in such a subtle way. Eggers is one of the most fascinating directors working today, whether it's The Lighthouse and The Witch. The Witch is one of my favorite films of this decade just for that stuff alone, and it did haunt me as I left the theater because of Black Phillip, because of some of the imagery, and of course, because of the score. Coming in at my number four is going to be Get Out. What? I'm jealous of Jordan Peele. This guy can do anything. He can make me laugh. He can scare the shit out of me. He can really write some of the most fascinating stuff in here, and Peele needs to be acclaimed for how great of a direction he did within Get Out. Daniel Kaluuya as well gives such a fantastic performance and really a breakthrough performance because till here, he was only here and there in films, but after this, he's been everywhere and he really shows in any film that he's in how great of a versatile actor he is. And Get Out, you know, while I don't think it's the scariest film, socially, the aspects that this film goes through is terrifying. And do you think of the concept of this film alone? It's also terrifying. It feels off and quirky, but in the best horror realms possible. And those are what makes some of my favorite horror films of this decade. Like, Get Out is so unique. And the more I think about it, the more I just fall in love with it. And coming in at my number three, God damn, this movie's great. It's Cabin in the Woods. Now, I thought this was going to be a straight horror film when I went to go see it with my friend Curtis. We sat down in the theater. Well, sorry. We snuck into the theater, sat next to a like an adult, and said, Hey, can you pretend to be our parents? They said yes. Guy comes up, asked for our tickets. They said that they were our parents. Guy left us alone. We got to sit there and watch Cabin in the Woods. Which was funny when, again, we watched this. We're like, isn't this supposed to be a horror film? We're laughing a lot more than we did. This is a total satire of the horror genre. Like, it's pretty much like looking at, say, Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street and being like, hmm, who's running this from behind the scenes? Why, did, why is this guy killing these kids for no reason? And it plays off that in such an intriguing and fun aspect. Whedon and Godard should be acclaimed for the way that they brought this film to life and all the different elements they decided to hit into it. I don't, again, this is a tough film to talk about if you've never watched it because you should watch it because it's a great satire into the horror genre. 
but it just plays around with all the elements so fun in such a great big sandbox world that god i just can't get enough of this movie and of course coming in on my number two guys we got two films to talk about my number two is the conjuring one of the scariest films i've ever seen and a lot of that goes to this man right here james wan james wan's direction my god what a fascinating character piece and a, a true story in effect i know some of it's a little bit embellished but the Warrens are so great, and shaping it through real Ghost Hunter eyes is one of the smartest aspects of The Conjuring, and I still really appreciate The Conjuring 2 as well, and I'm still looking forward to The Conjuring 3 next year. A little bit nervous on that one still. <sighs> Fingers crossed. I, God, I hope it's not bad. I really hope it's not bad. It'd suck if the trilogy ends on such a whimper, but The Conjuring is terrifying. It's one of those films that, you know, some horror films don't show the creature or the demon till the end. Nah, no, The Conjuring says... We're going to show you in the first 20 minutes what the Bathsheba looks like. And you scream and you scream. And I saw this movie like five times in theaters, each time about to poop my pants. And I just, everything about this movie, the way that James Wan shook up the horror genre, shook up the haunted house genre, and really portrayed it through these ghost hunter eyes makes you feel like you are one of the Warrens, while at the same time making you feel like you're brave enough to take the journey into this house, but at the same time also knowing that you're scared. And I like how he puts you into the shoes of them so well. You know, my number one, so you, people are going to shit on me for this. It's The Babadook. The Babadook is the best film of this decade. One of the best films ever made. And it's my favorite horror film. It's the one that made me fall in love with filmmaking. And inside the horror genre. And a lot of it comes down to that because I used to look at horror and be like, jump scare this, jump scare that. The Babadook told me it wasn't. Now, purely this is a pure psychological drama. But the horror aspects to it of what the Mr. Babadook looks like, everything with the child and everything that happens to do with the wife in here is just honestly excellent. And it scares the living shit out of me every time I watch it. Maybe not at the point of watching it, like when I'm sitting there watching it, but when I sit in my room and I look in the corner and I see a giant shadow looking over me, I think it's the Babadook. He's an icon in horror now. Like, that, that's just truth. You bring up the Babadook with someone on the street, I think I would say seven out of ten times, you're probably going to get someone that says, yeah, I know who the Babadook is. I've heard of that. I've seen what he looks like. It's fascinating to see such an independent film get such flair, but it's a movie that really is taking me away and taking my heart away to the horror genre to make me fall in love with it. And it's also what's made me so picky with the horror genre that I want more horror films to be like this. And I know the Babadook is not everyone's cup of tea. Many people crap on the movie, but for me, it's mine. And I am so fascinated and in love with this movie that it's a movie that I love to deep dive and analyze from every small detail. And the way that Kent directed this movie is the true star of this whole film. I mean, I saw The Nightingale earlier this year and the direction was also the big star in there. But just some of the imagery, the touching aspects of this film, and just in general to the ending, which some people don't like, I love. It's one of the most unique horror films ever made. And again, if you've never seen it, you definitely should. I even own the damn book. I've shown it in so many different videos. And God, I just love the Babadook. I love horror in general, guys. Thank you guys again so much for clicking on this video if you guys are new here. Again, comment down below. And remember, this is my opinion. So if you don't agree with me, I, I get it. I, I understand. Not all these films scared the crap out of me, but I love a fascinating story inside a horror film. And I'm curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are and what your guys' top 10 favorite horror films of this decade were. Did I give you guys any that you guys should go check out? Are there any that I need to check out? Let me know down below, guys. Thank you guys again so much for clicking on this. And of course, until next time, stay classy.